Hello guys, welcome back to this hair modeling video series. Here's a character I made for the study. And for this project, I have learned a new hairstyling workflow which uses only ZBrush. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I use this workflow to make game ready hair. But since this hairstyle is quite similar to the one I made in my previous video, so I'm not going to be making tutorial type of video, but instead, I'm going to be doing a short project breakdown and demonstration of new workflow. So without further ado, let's begin. This workflow, which I learned from Michael Pavroch when he was doing the live demo on Zebra Summit many years ago, utilizes custom IMM hairbrush to populate the hair cards. And cool thing about it is that we can create custom hair chunks and store many types of different hair chunks in a single IMM brush. Benefit of using hair chunk is that it is three dimensional, which means you can see from any angle and it looks 3D, as opposed to just flat 2D plane. And moreover, it creates volume for free, so it is very nice to work with it. So the way we create the brush is by preparing the mesh with triangular or square shape and assign polygroup by using group by normals. These three line or polygroups will become three strips of haircuts later. So once you have the mesh, create IMM curve brush and with this brush, we can draw out hair chunks on the character quickly. Once you have laid down the basic design of hair on the character, you can use unwilled group border to turn this one into actual hair cards, and then use inflate to adjust the shape. If you want to populate more hair cards, before you unweld group border, use frame by mesh with polygroup settings on. This will frame each polygroup border, and then apply IMM curve brush on these curves. This is a great way to create layers for the hair. It is so easy to work this way because you don't have to fight with Blender's native curves as it tends to tilt and spin around in an unexpected way and most of the time it doesn't behave in the way that I want it to. However, there's one downside of using this method, which is UV in these hair cards. Since we are not using hair tool alone, we are going to have to manually UV every single hair cards one by one. As you can imagine, it is a tedious process and this is what I dislike the most about this workflow. To UV the hair cards, I'm going to get help from text tool add-on. This adds a lot of useful UV features that are missing from Blender, and this is free so I can highly recommend it. So first step is unwrap the hair cards, and we need to straighten the UV, so select all, press rectify button. This will make the UV nice and square. Next, we want to stack all the hair cards on top of each other, so that we can modify the UV for the hair cards all at once. So select the hair cards and press fill which make the UV takes up the whole 0 to 1 UV space. And repeat this process to all the hair cards and once you are done, adjust the UV to fit your hair texture. Sometimes UV get flipped when you unwrap and it doesn't display the texture properly so when this happens, select the edges of a hair cards that are supposed to be root of a hair in the 3D viewport and if you take a look at the UV editor, you should be able to spot the UV which are being flipped. So deselect the UVs that are OK and press Ctrl L to select the entire bad UVs and flip. Then UV should work fine. Using this method, I created the hair for this character. You might be wondering why I chose to use this method as opposed to using the hair tool. And reason for this is that hair tool is really great for procedural and very specific workflow. But as far as I know, it doesn't support hair chunk workflow or more manual method that I prefer. So I kind of wanted to experiment with new techniques. I think overall, this is a very nice workflow. I still think I need to find better method of creating UVs, as it is a tedious work, especially if you have a lot of hair card. If I can find an add-on that has support for hair chunk workflow, I will probably use that instead of hair tool for my usual work, but until then, maybe I will continue using ZBrush workflow or try out different things. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop using the hair tool, but if anyone knows a good add-on for this type of workflow, please let me know in the comment section below. And that's all I got for today. I think this was a very short video, but I hope you found this video somewhat useful. And I hope to see you in the next video. So until next time, see you later.